Peace and blessings. Welcome to Brooklyn Crochet Presents Make and Take Crochet, a show about crochet designers and crochet fashion in and throughout the African diaspora and the black community. I'm your host, Yvonne Sloan Cherry, and today we're going to be joined with Nassant of Nassant Nation, fiber artist extraordinaire, and Phyllis Graham Anderson of Phyllis's Original Crochet Corner is back, and she's going to do our stitch of the day, which is the granny square and a granny triangle. And then she's going to put them together and show us how to form the letter C. C is for crochet. C is also for Cascade Yarn, our new yarn sponsor. Allow me to introduce Nassant. Nassanim Odiodi. Of Nassant Nation. Yes, yes. Welcome to Make and Take Crochet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I just want to start off with a few questions and then you can talk about what, what it is that you've been getting into lately, okay? Yeah. All right. Who was the first person in your life that inspired you to crochet? I'd have to say my mother, primarily. I, I grew up seeing my mother and my aunt create amazing doilies and chair back covers oh, and, wow. and, and, and pot holders and you know, all those different type of intricate stuff. So I had that in my, in my visual. I was always intrigued by it. Never necessarily knew that I would pick the, the yarn and the needle up, but I was definitely intrigued at a very early age by all the different little intricate patterns and the, the, the artistry and creativity of it all. So at what age did you pick up the hook? Um, officially, I would say I was probably like about 18, 19 years old. But the first time I actually picked up the hook when my moms gave me like my first introduction into actually holding the yarn and the mm -hmm. needle and whatnot, I was probably about seven, eight years old. Oh, okay, okay, mm -hmm. that's pretty young. Yeah. So then like this way when you got older, it was already in you, and now you just came up with your own flavor. Yes. Okay, yes, yes. okay, okay. So what was the first stitch that you learned? Um, well, the chain stitch. The chain stitch, which is, you know, the foundation for mm -hmm. everything that you do in crochet, you know what I mean? So I learned the, the, the foundation first, the chain stitch, then obviously the single crochet, then doubled and treble, and then ju it just kept going up from there. And then after that, I started exploring and getting into different books and pattern books and mm -hmm, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you add more stuff to your, your, your toolbox. Right. My favorite stitch is the half double crochet. What's wow. your favorite stitch? I was about to start interviewing you. Um, <laughs> I was about to be like, why is, why is that? Why is that? Let me see, what is my favorite stitch? I would say the single crochet. The single crochet? Yeah, single crochet is my favorite stitch. Why? Because of the rigidity that it gives when you twist it up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so it's like all the pieces are very close together. All your stitches right. are very close together. So you don't have a lot of gaps or spaces mm -hmm. in between, you know? Mm -hmm. So you could have a very tight fabric. Mm -hmm. That's why I really like that single crochet. Okay. I like the half double crochet because it's kind of like the, the sure single is. crochet mm -hmm. with the but it's just a little more mm -hmm. height. A little bit more So height. I'm able to finish something up <laughs> a little faster than if I was only working on a single crochet. Exactly. That's why I like that stitch. Exactly. I know it. <laughs> Does anyone else in your family crochet? You said your mom and your mm -hmm. aunt, yeah, right? Yeah, my mother, my aunt. That, those are the only two people that I am um, familiar with that crocheted, you know? My mom's a master pattern reader, all of that type of stuff. Um, my aunt, my aunt used to literally look at things in nature or out in the world and be able to translate those shapes into crochet. Oh, wow. Without reading patterns or anything like that. So that was her skill set. That's creative, you know I mean? yeah, yeah, that's that a was, talent. That, that was her skill set. And my mom's, she does everything from a pattern. She can't like pick up yarn and, and, and just make a thing. Mm -hmm. She probably could, but she has never challenged herself to do it in that kind of way. Mm -hmm. But a pattern, she could read patterns flawless. Have them come out immaculate. Where's your family originally from? 
Um, my mother's side of the family is from St. Vincent. My father's side of the family is from Dominica. Okay. And I was born in Dominica, so that's where I, I grew up and spent the majority of my early years. Now, is crochet really, really popular there? Yeah, as, as, as it is, along with basket weaving and a lot of the other, um, you know, handmade arts and crafts, mm -hmm. like all of those stuff uh, all throughout the Caribbean, you know? Mm -hmm. So young men and women would, would get involved in various different types of weave arts from an early age. Even if you don't stick with it, mm -hmm. but you would be exposed to it and have those different um, tangible skills, you know? Right, it's sort of like growing up in um, South Carolina, especially exactly. around in the Sea Islands, because we, we had to learn how to do the basket exactly. weaving too, you know my mean? grandma and whatnot, and, mm -hmm. and of course crocheting. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so sewing, you know, the just crafting, whole, well, right? Yeah, the whole, <laughs> the whole gamut of crafts. Yeah. Gamut. So, acrylic, cotton, or wool? Um, acrylic, cotton, and wool. <laughs> <laughs> For various different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, acrylic has a real ready to wear rough and tumble, like if I'm making bags or some kind of stuff that is going to take a lot of abuse. Mm -hmm. I would make it out of acrylic. The cottons obviously are more breathable materials, mm -hmm. so those would be like my springtime, summertime feels. If mm -hmm. I'm making something a little bit more lacy, something a little bit lighter as far as the weight is concerned, I would, I would definitely steer towards my cottons. And wools on the opposite side of the spectrum get towards your cooler times, your mm -hmm. falls and your winter times, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I would utilize those materials for that particular time of the year. Okay. How did you be begin to incorporate the leather and the ostrich and the zebra and all those types of skins that you use hmm. into your work? Well, creativity, right? It's a very interesting thing. So I would see one mode mm -hmm. and try to figure out how can I meld it or blend it with another mode of creativity. So I, I do leather work, I do metal work, I do, you know, I make jewelry. So uh, there are a lot of different um, skill sets that I have under my belt when it comes to creativity. So anytime I go to the table and I begin to create, a lot of different things flood through my head. Uh -huh. I'm like, well, let me see if this would make sense of this mm -hmm. or that would make sense of that. You know what I mean? Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. But in the times that it does, it gives you a whole nother like, push forward in your whole creative process. Be like, okay, well, this makes sense with that, so let me see if I, how I can evolve this particular idea. You know? And this, I mean, your work is beautiful. Thank you. Like, it Thank you. really Thank you. shows. How do you choose the colors that you use? Hmm. Um, what would I attribute that to? I, I would m mainly say growing up in the Caribbean. You know, we have a lot of uh, vivid, rich color palettes. Mm -hmm. Like like rich, like the colors feel like they attack in your eyes. <laughs> you know, there's um, a, a particular uh, show we have going on in Dominica called uh, the, the Flower Show, right? Mm -hmm. And every year there's a, a, a huge flower show in this part of Dominica called um, Girodel and Eggleston up in, uh, up in the mountains. Huge flower shows. And there are people that um, have been rearing the flowers for the entire year before to bring to this um, particular event. So there are all kinds of beautiful flower arrangements everywhere you turn your head. So the, the, the rush of color is immense, immense, immense. So I, I would attribute it to that. That's like why I have such a, a huge color palette. Oh, okay. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Is there like any special technique that you use when you add those skins to your work? Special techniques, I wouldn't necessarily say s special techniques. Um, the special part of it is the creativity of, mm -hmm. of how to put it together. Mm -hmm. But putting it together in, in, in itself is not necessarily the magic. So is it hand sewn or sewing machine? It's all hand. It's all hand. Yeah, it's all hand. You know, I, I cut everything by hand, stitch everything by hand, punch everything by hand. Oh, you know, okay. So it's all hand. And with the zippers too, because when I yeah, made my cardigan, so I could not 
sew the needle through the bottom part of your zipper because you know the bottom part here it's is hard. like a little tough yeah. so I couldn't get my needle through I ended up taking it to the dry cleaner <laughs> and just having him and just let him do it do it yeah okay so I'm gonna give you all a little trick right here live yes on, let's get the trick because I want to know on the crochet corner right boom <laughs> a couple things you could do you could either heat a needle up just heat it up with a lighter just burn the tip of it let it heat up for two, two seconds, it doesn't have to be that long, and that will punch right through the plastic tab at the bottom of your zipper. Or, wow. you can get a punch, a plier punch, oh, okay. used in jewelry making. See, and that's another way that one tool from a whole nother skill set mm -hmm. makes sense in a whole nother skill set. Right. You know what I mean? So if I wasn't necessarily doing the jewelry work, I wouldn't know about the punch tool and the punch tool is like easily. I use it to punch for brass and copper. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't it be able to punch for plastic? Right. You know, so I just translated it, use it, I need to punch a small hole, boom, done. Done. <laughs> Finish the sweater. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now that is good to know. So now I have a couple of more questions from the studio audience and mm. the home audience. Nice. And my first question is from Elizabeth, and she wants to know, do you have patterns of your work? Um, no, I don't have patterns. Not that I can't create them, but I haven't. Uh, each piece literally is its own living, breathing entity. So I make one, and then that's it. Not to say that I won't create mm -hmm. pieces to make patterns and have that be the thing, but as of now, up until now, I should actually say, I have not um, created patterns to pass on to a, a, another crochet artist, per se. Okay, so now since you don't make the patterns, then she wants to know where can she buy your stuff from and like how would she go about contacting you to order? Um, your best bet is to contact me through uh, Instagram, which is at N-A-S-S-A-T underscore nation. That's at Nassat Nation. That's your best way to contact me. Just send me a DM and then, you know, take care of business from there. Okay. And Victoria wants to know, how long did it take for you to finesse your style? My entire life. My entire life. Yeah, my entire life, you know. So, you know, style is not, I mean, some people go out and buy style. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's, it's, it's something that if you're an authentic person, mm -hmm. it is, it emanates out of your being, you know what I mean? It's not anything that is duplicated or, or, or can be replicated, you know? So my entire life, my entire life of being honest and authentic with myself, and that's how my style evolves and, and grows. Cool. Yeah. And last question is from Grisnell a.k.a. Gigi. Gigi wants to know, <laughs> up, do Gigi? you teach your technique? Yes, I do. I do. I do. I, I, I've done a series of crochet classes uh, throughout my tenure of being a crochet artist. I've taught from kids to elders, you know, in various different forms, from intermediate classes, novice classes, expert classes. I've, I've kind of taught all across the board. So if, you, if somebody wanted to contact you to come out and do a class or do a workshop, then mm -hmm. they also would contact you through Instagram? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Finally, what's your favorite snack? Like when you sit down, you're about to crochet, you're in your favorite crochet spot. What's your snack? My favorite snack, I would have to say, you know, I like a little bit of salt and a little bit of sweet. Mm. And I kind of like mix them, go back and forth. <laughs> My choice of salt is usually any kind of crunchy, sesame based kind of cracker type thing. <laughs> any of those work, doesn't necessarily matter the brand. And on the sweet side, is some kind of gummy type something. Some kind of. Gummy bears, some sour kind of, powers. Some kind of gummy something. <laughs> some type of gummy something on one side, a little crunchy over here, crunchy gummy, salty sweet. You know, to get your balance going on, you know what I mean? That's what's up. Yeah. So now tell us about what you got going on, what you're about to be getting into. Um, as of next weekend, uh, 
I have a few shows coming up in the Boston area. Uh, I love doing fashion shows at colleges. They are unwittingly a very impactful platform because they are the next set of people that's going to go out into the world to do things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So literally, you have your brand and your product in their face. What, what's a better place to have your brand in than your product? You know, and it's like, it's always been a, a great relationship and exchange between myself and the various college organizations that I've done work with, you know? So I'm keeping this whole little tour going on. It's a crochet cavalcade, and we're hitting up a bunch of different schools all throughout the Eastern Seaboard. And a um, couple different uh, events coming up. October 12th, we have a big uh, gallery event coming up at Stone House down in Park Slope, Brooklyn. It's a big exhibit. Big whoop to do, much to do about everything. Uh, so definitely come on out, check the vibes, see what we got going on. At this, the, the one at the Stone House, that's during the summer or after summer? Uh, that's going to be October 12th. So. Oh, so that's at the Kings County Fiber Festival. Yeah. So it's going to be a part of the Kings County Fiber Fest, and we have a, a special Save that exhibit. Date. October Save the date. 12th. Save the date. Special exhibit, shout out to Maxine. Uh, special exhibit and... Uh, artist talk and you know good vibes yeah shout out to maxine hey mm -hmm. maxine <laughs> i'm gonna have to get her up on this couch exactly mm -hmm. exactly exactly now you have two pieces here can you tell us about them um like i'm too short <laughs> <laughs> like i'm too short oh wow yes 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 so um drum majorette that was the whole inspiration for this particular piece. The cut, a lot of the, the, the line work is representative of that. And, and you know, with my own particular twist on it, my own particular um, variation, but uh, that is essentially what this particular vibes is, you know what I mean? I call this one Lilac Breeze. Lilac Breeze? Lilac Breeze. I like that, I like that. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And this yeah, is... you know, and it's, it's a lot of different elements. This one is like, heavily embellished. There's a lot of uh, metal work going on in there, a lot mm -hmm. of rivets. There's a lot of uh, zip zippers and, you know, there's zippers yeah, on the hood. Back. There's leather work going on in the back. You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff. This was like my old logo. I would say this logo is from maybe 2002 or something like that, all the way back then. And that's the logo I was using for a while. And I decided to put it as an ode to my all the vibrations on a new piece. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's somewhat like a throwback, so to speak. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. And what yarn is that? That's a lot of acrylics. It's a lot of acrylics. The, all the pieces that I brought today were all acrylic-based acrylic, acrylic -based pieces. But another thing that I like about acrylic is the fact that people put it at the bottom of the barrel as far as yarn is concerned. Like me? Yes. You know, all, 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 all the yarn snobs out there. They all the put, yarn snobs. They put the, they put the acrylic all the way at the bottom of the barrel, and I decided, I decided, I vowed to be like, yo, listen, I'm about to show you what can be done with acrylics. And all these pieces are acrylics. All of these pieces are acrylics. Well, so, you see, so you see what can be done with the acrylics? Yes. You know what I mean? And I like to use acrylic yarns as the same way that acrylic paint is used. Because you see how the colors are very vibrant and rich? Mm -hmm. Same kind of way. So you don't, then you could, you, could, you could get real funky with your color blocking. You know, you could get real funky with your color blocking. As in with this particular piece, you know. And a lot of inspiration for the, the pieces, especially the men's pieces, are, are a lot of um, sneakers and the, the colorway of the sneakers that are available at any particular time, you know. So a lot of the jackets that you'll see me with, they would match a particular sneaker colorway to the T. For example, the jacket that I have on right now and, and the, the sneakers that I have on right now. Oh, so the colorway yeah. match mm -hmm. to the T. To the T. To the T, you know? So that's, that's what I do. And this whole ideology is called Just For Kicks. And you know what I mean? It's a double entendre playing on the whole vibes of Just For Kicks, Just For Fun, Just For Whatever, Just For Laughs, Just For Kicks. But the jackets are just for the kicks because they are uh, immediate, direct marriage 
to the cakes. And I'm just gonna pass you this before I knock down the whole display. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll leave this guy right here to come chill out with us for Yeah, because that's of our cool. Session. And I really like the way the, the colors blend too. Yeah, you know, so I, I love so colors, man. I love how colors come together. I love how you have um, serious contrast and juxta juxtapositions of, of colors and different vibrations, you know. So I pay attention to those type of things and I try to like literally just directly put it into my work. Okay. Do you think about mentoring any other like young men? Because I... I have a nephew and he really likes to crochet. Nice. I mean, I need to introduce him to you. Yeah, so that would be great. Teach That'd him be some, great. some new stuff. Um, the mentoring and teaching of crochet that I do to kids right now is out of the Zyax Institute over in Brownsville, Brooklyn. We're on 1596 St. Mark's Avenue. Shout out to Brownsville. Yeah, shout out to Brownsville, you know what I mean? Never ran, never will. And, and we're over there doing some, some serious impactful work with the kids. We have a school upstairs and, and, and we, we try to impart all the tools that we have as adults and young adults back into the, the minds and hearts of the kids, you know what I mean? So crochet is one of the uh, things that we teach the young men and women over there. Okay, well thank you for coming out to our show. It was yes, so indeed. nice having you at thank Make you. and Take Crochet. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you for having me. Today's make and take project is a granny square and the granny triangle. And we have Phyllis of Phyllis's Original Crochet Corner here to demonstrate how to do both of them. Then we're going to join the triangles and the squares together to form the letter C. C is for crochet and C is also for cascade yarn, which is our new sponsor for make and take crochet. Welcome, Phyllis. Thank you for having me again, Yvonne. This is great. I'm excited. We're going to do a little demonstration today. Yes. And um, I'm going to get started right away. Yes. Then I'm going to chain up three. Um, then I'm going to go in that first section and make uh, 11 more double crochets, crochets so that we have a nice circle to begin our square. And this is, works up pretty quickly. It's pretty easy to do. And most of the time, people are able to work up squares, you know, in no time and work toward their projects. Let me do a quick count, three, six. I'm okay, we need one more. I think squares are good to do, like, let's say that you finished a, a, a project and you got a little bit of yarn. It's not enough to create another project, but I think it's good to just make a couple of squares with your leftover yarn. Yes. So as you add up from one project to the next, you can put all your squares together and mm -hmm. then create something else. Yes. So now we have a circle. Uh-huh. 12, because the three chains in the beginning was counted as one. And we're going to go into that top of that, those chains, do a slip stitch to join that row. So now we have the complete circle. Then I'm going to chain up three times. Then I'm going to go in between the spacing here and put in six double crochets. So the chain counts as one and two more double crochets mm -hmm. make three. In between the three, I'm going to make one chain. Then I'm going to go back in that same space and do three more double crochets. This is the beginning of our corner. Mm -hmm. So that's one corner made. I'm going to skip three double crochets, go in the next space, and make another set of six. So this is two, three, one chain. I'm going to make three more, and we'll have our second corner. So now we have two corners done. And... We're going to skip three again, one, two, three stitches, go in the next space, put a third corner, again, three double crochets, one chain, three more double crochets, and we're up to corner number three. So it works up pretty quickly. As you see, getting that nice square there, and I'm going to go in between the last six and 
do the last corner. So I did three double crochets, one chain, three more double crochets, and one chain. So now I'm going to slip stitch it together. So as you see, a nice square. square. This is what we're aiming for. Okay. okay, so if I take this and need scissors, I'll snip this and we can now move on because to make the letter C, you need, a, you need squares and triangles. Uh -huh. So now I'm going to make my triangle. Okay. So again, I'm just going to So make does the triangle start off as a circle? Uh, almost. It's like a half circle. Okay. How about that? So I'm going to, I made a little, my starter's loop, and I'm going to chain up three. Then I'm going to go into the bottom of that, where that loop was, and make three more double crochets. Hold on, the yarn is not cooperating. Okay. One, two, and three. Okay. So now, now that first set of chains, mm -hmm. that counts as one. And I did two, three more double crochets. Now I'm going to do one chain. Now I'm going to go back in that same loop and do four more double crochets. So it's even on both sides. And you try to... So you have four, a chain, and then four. Yes. So now this is like a little baby triangle, mm -hmm. if you can see it. So it's a total of nine stitches. Well, three, yes. right, the, um, four, four doubles, one chain, four doubles. Yes, so now you turn it around, and I'm gonna chain up one, two, three. And that first chain counts as one, and I'm going to go in that last loop and make three more double crochets. So that's the side of the triangle. Now, in between where I had that chain, in between the, the groups of four, I'm going right in that chain and I'm going to make six double crochets. So I have three, make one chain to make that point, and three more. So I have the top of the triangle formulated. Now I'm going to go to the end, and I'm going to, in the last stitch, I'm going to make four more double crochets. When you make four on the ends, mm -hmm. it allows for the triangle to um, lay down properly, as you might say. OK, so now there's our triangle. OK. There's our triangle. So those are the two things you need to make two your letters. Two things to make those letters. Now, we have some um, tr triangles and squares already made up. The right amount that we need to formulate the C. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this C on the table. So here we have... three squares, that's the side of the C, and then we're going to make the top part of the C by just putting these um, squares and triangles in. And as a matter of fact, this is a pattern that you can get off of Etsy, one of my patterns. Yes. So. We'll have that link available at the end of the show, so you'll know just where they go, so you can get all 26 letters of the alphabet. Of the alphabet, exactly. So here we have the top part of the C formulating, and so if you take a look now, what do you see? The letter C put together nice and neat, and all you do is single crochet all of these squares and triangles together. And it's an easy fix, and you have your C. C for crochet, C for cascade yarns. That is our To the magic sponsor. of TV, I actually have one. So now we're going to show you one that's totally complete. 
Yep, so this is actually um, some Cascade yarn. Like I said, they are our new sponsor. Um, this yarn is called, this is the Peruvian Tones. Octopima Peruvian Tones. And, oh my God, I really like this yarn. It's nice, it's 100% cotton. That's my little so, granny square with the little There's a granny ones. square. And now, to the magic of TV, TV we, got the we have our C already done with the nice sparkly <laughs> edging. C for Cascade, C for Crochet. C is for Yvonne Cherry too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, yeah, but that's really nice. And I, I just really like the way your mind came up with this. <laughs> I well, got like a thousand things I want to do with these letters. Right. Okay, varsity jackets, monogram pillows. I mean, well, the the choices are endless. Yeah, choices really are endless. Are. And behind us, we have how you manipulate again the the um, squares and triangles to make letters. So you these this is an initial letter lettered blanket for a little girl. Her name is Jasmine. I'm sure she's going to like it. And I put together a matching pillow so that she can, you know, run around with her pillow and special blanket. And the other one is just a generic one, blanket with squares. You just uh, add to the creativity. And here's the pillow that goes with that one. They make wonderful um, shower gifts. Definitely. You know, for new babies, you can always color coordinate, you know, what Baby works. Baby shower. Baby First showers. First birthday present. Yes. <laughs> the the opportunities, opportunities are endless, right? Mm hmm <laughs> For sure. Right. So thank you for Wait a minute, one more thing. What is what else do we have here? Oh we have how some can other I one more thing we need to share. Yes, it is. So this is a new yarn from Cascade also. And I love variegated yarn. But what I do is I go from the inside to the outside. So I might start my project and work the outside of the ball, which is how I came up with this. And then I might pull from the inside of the ball, which is how I came up with this. So, and sometimes I, I go back and forth. I might do four rows from the inside and five rows from the outside. And this yarn is there. Oh, the label has torn. But this is the... What does that say? Paradigm. Paradigm. Yes. Paradigm. Very nice. Paradigm shift. And that, that yarn is really nice. And it's 100% cotton. And it's a worsted weight yarn. So thank you again, Cascade Yarn. Yes. Excellent. So finishing up, going back to what Nassant was doing with um, crocheting, because a lot of people go, Oh, there's a man and he crochets. Yes, men have been crocheting. Men have been crocheting for centuries. And you'll see them in ancient cultures. If you look around, you'll see like nice kufis with all types of color work going on in them. And that's what Nassant work just brings to my mind. It's like something that's just been in his blood for centuries and he's bringing it back out to us now. So thank you everybody for joining the show, Make and Take Crochet. Come back again soon. Our next show is going to be about summer tops. So summer tops, bikini tops, crochet fashion. Thank you.